Hi good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to Devs and Dice, the channel where I usually paint a whole lot of miniatures. With this video however, I'm gonna venture into new territory. I'm gonna show you how I crafted my own flame skull uh, miniature for Dungeons and Dragons, coming right up. Alright guys, so a while back I bought the booster case for Dungeons and Dragons uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Now one of the miniatures that I got was Barnabas the Flame Skull. Flame skulls are, in my opinion, among the coolest uh, undead monsters you can have in your arsenal as a dungeon master. They are essentially dead wizards or spellcasters that have been resurrected by evil clerics or wizards to do their bidding. Flame skulls are also uh, fifth level spellcasters, which makes them quite fun and powerful to use as a dungeon master. Now, looking at that miniature that I got, as far as I know, this is the only official Flame Skull miniature out there. I like WizKids products in general. I wasn't particularly impressed with uh, this one. In my humble opinion, there's quite a large dissonance between the concept art and the actual miniature. That's why I decided to create these. How did you do that, Leif? Well, you know what? It's actually quite simple. Let's get to it. All right, so first off, I'm gonna use the Citadel Skulls. This is something that every miniature painter or terrain maker should have. They are awesome to use on bases and different terrain builds, and they will last you a while, well, since it's, you know, like 340 skulls. And today, they will of course take the center stage. I went with four skulls. Two of them are orcish and two of them are human. Some small cleaning up is of course needed on the skulls, but it's not a lot and it's done easiest by using a hobby knife. Now I did not have any acrylic staves that were thin enough, so I decided to improvise and use some paper clips that I tried to straighten out. To attach the head securely, I used my hobby drill and then simply drilled a hole in the bottom of the skulls and then attached them with some super glue. Looking good so far. Now looking back on this build, I could have used the exact same method on the bases, but I decided to go with an old terrain builder's trick. Baking soda and easy flowing super glue. When these two components meet, they react instantly and weld the pin in place. And this is what they look like before priming. And on that note, I did prime all of them in a flat black color. My recipe for bone and skulls is Army Painter Skeleton Bone. And this is thinned out and it needs to be applied in several coats to get full coverage without losing any of those nice details. Once the coats are fully dried, I come in with some Seraphim Sipia from Citadel. This wash really makes the bones grimy and nice looking. This is what it looks like before drying. So I added some dead white to the palette. As usual, I add some flow improver to make the paint flow easily off the brush. The objective is to undercoat the eye sockets of the skeletons to create those intense eyes. Okay, time to start working on those flames. For this, my weapon of choice is my low temperature hot glue gun. 
Now doing flames good with a hot glue gun is a back and forth process. You have to sort of make it look chaotic, which means that you have to sometimes get in a basic shape, let it cool off, and then come back in with the hot muzzle and sort of reshape it and yeah, sometimes even add some additional glue. Okay, so once that was done, I added some additional dead white, green fluorescent paint and some Veritas green ink to my palette. I start out with a base coat of white. Now this can be a little bit tricky, but keep at it and eventually the paint will stick onto the glue. Once I have a nice base coat, I start wet blending in some green fluorescent paint and then some of that ink at the very tips. At this point, I brought in some yellow and orange ink from Green Stuff World and I started laying them on the eyes. Once dry, I come in with some flash gets yellow and add just a dot in the middle of the eyes. And at this point, I thought I was done, so I started adding some crackle paint from Green Stuff World. I've never tried these things, and I was sort of curious to see how they worked. I also added some yellow fluorescent paint, which I glazed on the bottom of the flames. Let's have a look at how all of this turned out. Alright good folks, I want to thank you so much for watching this far. What did you think about the result? Do you like these kind of more sort of crafting videos? My plan is to start mixing some miniature painting and uh, crafting videos uh, going forward. As always, if you liked the video, then please hit that like button, share it, or subscribe. Anything you can do really helps me and the channel out. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, as usual, please post them down in the comment section down below. Alright, I need to get uh, cracking on uh, the next uh, project. Stay safe, and I wish you an awesome day. Until next time. Hey, sans, hey, sans.